from James Long. Mm -hmm. What qualities do you need to be an astronaut? You know, the, the math and science. Yeah, and, education. And edu yeah. You know, your education. Yeah. You have to have, have a technical a strong... degree right. with uh, either an advanced technical degree or a bachelor's degree with an equal amount right. of, of hardcore of experience. professional experience. And as as, you know, we have military people. We have yeah. lots of, it's, it's, uh, it's a wide range of people yeah. as far as to be qualified. But I think you know, the one thing that is, that is uh, sometimes hard to explain is that it's not just you know, the best and smartest people that you pick. Yeah, it's I mean, the we're people examples that of that, right. Well, yeah, Don's got it all, but in, in my case, obviously, you know, there are a lot of people that are applied. You know, there are people I went to grad school with, there are professors that that I know, like at places that I studied, like at mm -hmm. MIT, who apply a heck of a lot smarter than I, I am. Just the and they way didn't they make it? They didn't make it, I think, and it's not because they were, that there was anything wrong there, it's it's just, I, I you know, well, you know sometimes, you, uh, you've heard maybe. I actually don't know why those guys didn't get picked. But I said one thing you do look for that's not necessarily on paper is being able to get along and work as a team that's player. That's true. Someone you'd want to be around. That's true because you're going to be I'm around not saying those people for a long like that. period of time right, but I think in that's a small the, space. And that's, so that's what I think is you know being a good team player, being a guy yeah. you could trust your life with, um, I, yeah. I think is the, the sort of thing is, is, a, is a good quality um, for an astronaut to have. Yeah. And it's, that's, that's where you try to yeah. see that you know, more in the yeah. interview part of the of the process than what you see on paper. Yeah, another thing is you need to sort of be a jack of all trades because uh, the crew size yeah. is small and you can't have a dedicated science bio guy that can only do science bio right. or a dedicated cook or a dedicated machinist or plumber or whatever. Everybody has to be able to do a little bit of everything with maybe their own little specialty that they can add to the mix. So, so you have to be well-rounded in terms of your skill sets right. to be able to function in an environment uh, where you are in the wilderness, you're in the frontier, and you're with a small group of people, and you may need to do surgery, yeah, you minor know. surgery, on one of your crewmates one day, and then you need to tear apart a flow control valve in the carbon dioxide scrubber the next day, and then you're you're doing some complicated Marangoni experiment the day what? after that. Macaroni experiment? Marangoni. Marangoni, sorry. But you have well, you to, be to be trainable. You have to be willing I, to be an adult and still yeah. be going to but school. But the jack of all trades, I think, uh, I, I, to, I don't know how you feel about it, Don, but it seemed like it became more more so important when we got to the long duration stuff, and it's going to be really important for the for further yeah. exploration. Yeah. With the shuttle, when you had a crew of seven, you know, people could concentrate on spacewalking, people could concentrate on the landing, people could concentrate on working the robot arm or whatever it might be. You didn't you didn't have to do everything. But for a station, now you really have to be able to do everything. You never know what you're going to be called on to do. I lost your attention. This is from Jessica Patrick. Apparently she is a teacher. Okay. I uh, like those teachers because she says, my students. Oh, that's good. Wording my students, students is good. are doing an inquiry on Mars. Okay. And want to know what would be the biggest obstacle to humans living there on oh, Mars. Living Now, Going to Mars and coming back to Earth, the biggest obstacle is probably radiation. Uh, that's what I was going to say. But living on Mars, you have the effect, the atmosphere, so even great. though it's thin, yeah. it's 10 grams per square centimeter shielding. So the radiation is not as big a deal? It's not as big a deal. You'll still it's worse have to than worry. on Earth, though. It's worse than on Earth, but but it will protect you from a lot of the galactic cosmic rays and things. So, okay. so radiation may not be... A, it's mainly CO2 on the... Uh, yeah, it's mainly CO2. It's yeah. the atmosphere. Right. Yeah. yeah. All um, right. What's the biggest deal on Mars? Uh, probably. What's the gravity there? Three eighths or yeah, something? Yeah, three eighths. Okay. I think it's just making. It's almost about half the gravity yeah. we have here. I, I think it's the same thing in terms of what we see on station, and it's keeping the machinery of life support running. Because mm -hmm. this stuff is always breaking down. And, and it's because we're learning how to do it. And when you're going to Mars, it's going to be a long ways to get spare parts. So I think the, the hardest thing about living and working on Mars is going to be keeping your life support equipment running. Because you're so far away. So far away. And, and this equipment, because it's engineered by human beings, it's not perfect. And any kind of mechanism is going to be breaking down. And maybe after 100 years of living on Mars, we'll have something that's really reliable. But up to then, uh, it's always going to be breaking down, and keeping it running is going to be a big deal. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a good one. 
All right. Uh, I mean, they're all good questions. Uh, this is from Laura Austin. And she asks, how fast does uh, the ISS react when the on onboard thrusters are fired to avoid space junk? So what happens is when you have to avoid something, you can only go up and down. Right. And you can, and this happens, we're, we're getting really good at predicting these things. We are. Right? So uh, it's not, you know, the, you, don't, you don't worry so much anymore. We haven't had a shelter in place for a couple of years. Yeah, the last time I think we had one was when I was on orbit. When you were there with Don, yeah. with, when with Dan, Dan was there? Yeah. Okay. And Dan was the commander at the yeah. time? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you had to do a shelter in place, but I don't yeah. think we've had one since then. So yeah, we're getting pretty good so. about finding these things yeah. early and uh, then doing an adjustment. Yeah. Then the crew may not even know about it, right? And no, so, they, are, they always let us know. Always but, let know but, but they're operated but from the ground. From the ground, okay. Yeah. So um, knowing about it meaning that the ground will take care of it. Yeah. Okay, so, but what is it, I think the question was, was uh, how does the station react to that? Okay, what, do you well, feel when, you fire, when you fire the rockets, what station, you go from 10 to the minus 6 G, which is micro G, to 500 micro g. So the, the local gravity, so 10 to, to the minus 6, which yeah, is little. Yeah, 10 to the minus 6 to 500 times 10 to the minus 6. Which is still kind of small. Yeah, it's still small. So you, unless you're really paying attention, you barely even notice when we fire the rocket thrusters on station. Mm -hmm. You can still float around and stuff. You'll see things on the wall kind of wiggle around a little bit. But in terms of just be in there and, and what you're doing, you, you hardly notice that you're doing a reboost. And we'll move the altitude of station maybe 10 kilometers, mm -hmm. something like that. So you do your, re and you do reboost normally? Yeah, so about not, not just to avoid three stuff. weeks. So, and you don't, feel, you don't feel those? You know when they're coming, do they warn you Yeah, yeah they, they warn so you. And, even and for the regular reboost, not the yeah, avoidance? Yeah, even a regular reboost. So they'll, they'll always right. give us a courtesy call saying, hey, we're going to do a reboost tomorrow and do morning. do you notice it? Yeah, yeah, you do and, uh, and and you have to pay attention. Pay attention to it. Yeah. It's not like on shuttle when we would do if you would oh, fire yeah, the yeah, man. yeah, when you, you do, do a big, big kaboom, yeah, and bonk, <laughs> yeah, hang on, hold on to your yeah. hats, and, yeah. and yeah. okay, yeah. all right. 